In this lesson, we'll begin to untap the huge potential for Excel to do calculations through the use of formulas. Excel is incredible in this, and we're just going to start the very basics so we can get a sense of how it works as we then move on in subsequent levels to more advanced formulas. Let's take a look at our document that we've been looking at to get an idea of how we can add some formulas in here. So we have a document here that shows staff at a small company. So in column A, we have the names of people. In column B, their job function. Column C, their hourly rate. In column D, the hours that they've worked this week. In this example, let's create a column, or let's create another list in column E that shows what their salary owed this week is. So we'll simply type this in. So we know from just a basic mathematical sense that the way we calculate the salary is to multiply the hourly rate in column C by the hours worked in column D. But rather than just type this in, Excel will be able to calculate a function, a formula that will work throughout. We start a formula always, always, always by typing the equal sign. This tells Excel that we're going into a calculation mode. Now once we've typed an equal sign, you'll notice some changes. If I click anywhere in the document, Excel will add that cell into the formula. This is our first method of adding and building formulas, is clicking with the mouse. So once we've selected the cell that we want to multiply, we then need to tell Excel what the, what the action is. In Excel, just like in basic math, we work with the operators such as plus, minus, uh, multiply, the asterisk for multiply, and the forward slash for divide. We're going to use the asterisk just by typing it on the keyboard to tell Excel that we want to multiply cell C2. And then to tell it that we're multiplying by cell D2, we'll very simply click there. You can accept this formula and tell Excel to calculate by pressing Enter. And as soon as we press Enter, Excel automatically does the multiplication and shows the result in cell E2. Now one important thing to note is once we've put a formula in here, if we click on the cell, you'll notice in the active cell we see the result of the formula. If we look up to our formula bar, we see the formula itself. As we start to build more advanced functions in Excel, this is an important way to notice what's going on and what's actually happening behind the scenes. So now that we have a formula, we can look at one other way to build this formula and then we'll apply it to all of the records, all of the employees in our database. The second way we can build a formula is very simply by typing. In our last example, we used the mouse. This time, we'll just type the names of the cell references we want to use. So we are going to use C3 and multiply by D3 by entering that on the keyboard. And again, Excel calculates the same result, it's just another option for entry. So in this lesson, we've started with the very basics of entering a formula and started to see how Excel can powerfully calculate these. The next thing we're going to do is to fill that formula down so we can see how Excel can apply what we've done in one cell to a whole row of things without any extra work on our part. When your, cell, when your active cell indicator is on a cell that has some sort of data in it, whether it's a formula, a number, or anything, you'll notice that in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a small box. That's going to unlock your autofill features. So if we grab onto that box, you'll see that Excel turns your cursor into a black cross. If you drag and hold your mouse key down and then let up, Excel autofills. This is an incredibly powerful tool. You'll also notice that as you autofill, you're given then a box called autofill options. If you click the drop down here, you'll see some options that Excel will give you. We, we did the default, which is copy cells, and that's what happens when you click down without selecting any other options. You can also fill with the formatting only or without formatting, which we'll cover it later. So now we have a column of salary owed. Let's take a look at these formulas looking in the formula bar to understand how Excel has used a relative cell reference. Basically, all that relative cell reference means is that Excel knows how to look at the different rows in position to the cells that we used in our original formula. So if we look at our formula bar, in row 4, Excel knows that we want row 4 to be multiplied. And you'll see again in our formula bar for row 5, 
the cell has been, the formula has been amended. Once you click in the formula bar, you'll see another handy feature of Excel, is, which is the color coding. So C5 is blue, and you'll notice that that highlights cell C5 on the document in blue. D5 is indicated in our formula bar in green, and so on and so forth. Next, we're going to look at how to build a formula with an absolute cell reference. Basically, this means we always want Excel to multiply by the same field. So in this example, we're going to look at owing tax on the salary that we owe our employees. Let's say we owe 7.5% tax. That isn't going to change based on, on how we fill down the formula or which employee is which. Everybody is 7.5%, so that's a field we'll always multiply by. There's two different ways we could do this. Let's take a look. If we build the formula, we can type equals to indicate to Excel we're building a formula, click on the salary owed, and then multiply by 0 0.075, which is 0.75%, which is 7.5%. However, what if our tax rate changes, or what if the portion that we owe is adjusted? This doesn't give us a lot of flexibility as we build our document. So what we're going to do is create a label on our spreadsheet that indicates our tax rate, and when we build our formula, we'll, we'll refer to that cell. So let's go back and delete the work, and we'll come down here and type in tax rate at 7.5%. Now when we return to column F to build our formula to calculate what our tax rate is, we will select the salary, and this is a relative cell reference. The relative cell reference means that as I move down my chart and as I fill down my formula, we want Excel to look at the salaries owed for each line and then calculate the tax. But I'm multiplying by typing the asterisk by an absolute reference, which is our tax rate, the same for everyone. The way I tell Excel to use cell B14, our tax rate, as an absolute reference is by typing in dollar signs. The dollar sign in front of the column reference will tell Excel to always refer to column B. And the dollar sign in front of the, cell, the row reference, 14, again, will tell Excel to always refer to that cell. We can do a mixed absolute reference, which means that the column's the same but the row's not. But for our example, and in most cases, both our row and our column number will be um, absolute, as indicated by the dollar signs. As we press enter, this calculates the same result we saw before, but gives us the flexibility to change our tax rate. If we were to type 0 .08, for example, you'll see that our calculation in cell F2 very easily changes. Now that we've calculated and built a formula using the absolute rate, let's fill down. We could click on the cross in the cell as we did before, but this time I want to show you the uh, fill tool in the editing group in our ribbon. So if we highlight the cell, and then highlight down the column of cells that we'd like to fill, we'll go up to our editing group, use the drop down on the fill tool, and select down. And this fills our formula down in, for the entire column. As we look at the formula in different cell, in different rows, we'll see the result, 28 here, and up in the formula bar, you'll notice that the row number has changed as a relative cell reference, but the tax rate has stayed absolute thanks to those dollar signs. So we're always multiplying the salary owed by our tax rate. So in this lesson, we've taken a look at how to build basic formulas and the power that we have with Excel's fill function to take one formula and apply it to a whole range of data. We've also looked at the difference between relative cell references, which will change as we move down our chart with Excel's fill function, and an absolute cell reference, which always pulls data from the exact same place in your worksheet.